Hey guys, it's Ella here. I just wanted to share with you some information that I've come across doing some research. And um, it's about Kingston, Norfolk Island, or well, we call it Norfolk Island. Um, Norfolk Island is this beautiful little small island here on the east coast of Australia, in between Australia and New Zealand. We've got Norfolk Island, we've got um, another island up here, Phillip Island, another island up here. And then a little bit down, we've got Lord Howe Island. Okay, now, down here is where they, Captain Cook, of course, come along in 1788 and settled on this place in 1808. And it was called after uh, Lady Nor Norfolk. So I'll show you some more of these buildings soon and to anyone out there that's interested in possible mud flood, um, some of these buildings are very old and could possibly be part of that, whether it's the land sinking down through vibrations being changed or either a massive tsunami that's left mud. And looking at the island, I, I think it would mean tsunami more than anything. Okay, so let's jump into it and find out some of the juicy, juicy stuff we've got. Now, yeah, well, where was it? Oh, don't tell me I lost my page. I'm so sorry about this. Okay. All right, so we're going to do that again, have we? Okay. Cargo boat going on the North Bay Garden. All right. Okay. Now, let's end that one. My apologies. Okay. So many windows open. My apologies. Okay. North Bay Garden. Hi. Norfolk Island is an Australian external territory, an island in the Pacific Ocean between Australia, New Zealand, and New Caledonia. It's 1,412 kilometres or 887 miles directly east of mainland Australia's Evans Head, about 900 kilometres, 560 miles from North Howe Island. Norfolk Island, together with the two neighbouring islands, Phillip and Nepean Island, form the territory of Norfolk Island, one of the Commonwealth of Australia's external territory. At the 2016 census, it had 1,748 inhabitants, Living in a total area of about 35 square kilometres, 14 miles square. Its capital is Kingston. The first known settlers in Norfolk were East Polynesians, but they were long gone when Great Britain settled it as a part of its 1788 settlement of Australia. The island served as a convict penal settlement between 6th of March 1788 until the 15th of May 1855, except for, aha, 11 year hiatus between the 15th of February. 1814 and 6th of June 1825, where it lay abandoned. And on the 18th to 6th of, 8th of June 1856, permanent settled residents on the island began when it was separated from Pitcairn Island. 1914, the UK habited, headed Norfolk Island over to Australia to minister as an external territory. The evergreen pine is a symbol of the island and is pictured on its flag. Native to the island is the Pine King. Except for Norfolk, export, export North for Norfolk Island. Being a popular ornament tree, ornamental tree on mainland Australia where two related species grow and also worldwide. Okay, separated from Tasmania on the 1st of November 1856, transferred to Australia on the 1st of July 1949. Norfolk Island was settled by East Polynesian seafarers either from the Kermatic Islands, north of New Zealand, or from the North Island of New Zealand. They arrived in the 13th or the 14th century and survived for several generations before disappearing. They must have had at least a few hundred years before Europeans arrived at the, as the island was covered by forests then. So pretty much they've come in and they've found all these buildings here and just covered in forest and evergreen. The first European... Known to have sighted and landed on the island was Captain James Cook on the 10th of October 1744 on his second voyage to the South Pacific on HMS Resolution. He named it after Mary Howard, Duchess of Norfolk. That's the lady, 1712-1773. Sir John argued the advantages of Norfolk Island that it was uninhabited and that New Zealand flax grew there. And in 1786, the British government Included Norfolk Island as an auxiliary settlement as proposed by John Cowell 
uh, in its plan for colonization of New South Wales. The decision to settle Norfolk Island was taken due to Empress Catherine of Russia's decision to restrict sales of hemp particularly all the hemp and flax required by the Royal Navy for cordage and sailcloth was imported from Russia. And, of course, around that time they were having their wars up in the Baltics with Napoleon and all those kind of things. So. When the first fleet arrived at Port Jackson in January 1788, Governor Arthur Phillip ordered Lieutenant Philip Gidley King to lead a party of 15 convicts and seven free men to take control of Norfolk Island and prepare its lead party for commercial development. They arrived on the 6th of March 1788. During the first year settlement, which was also called Sydney, like its parents, more convicts and soldiers were sent to the islands of New South Wales. Robert Watson, 1756 to 1819, harbour master, arrived with the first fleet as quartermaster of HMS Cyrus, and it was still serving in that capacity when the ship was wrecked at Norfolk Island in 1790. Next year, he obtained and cultivated a grant of 60 acres, 24 hectares on the island. As early as 1794, Lieutenant Governor of New South Wales, Francis Gross, settled it, suggested its closure as a penal settlement, as it was too remote and too difficult for shipping, too costly to maintain. The first group of people left in February 1805, and by 1808, only 200 remained, forming a settlement until the remains, remnants were removed in 1813. A small party remained to slaughter slop destroy all buildings so there would be no inducement for anyone, especially of other European powers, to visit and lay claim to the place. From the 15th of February, 1814, to the 6th of June, 1825, the island laid abandoned. Now, this falls in around the time frame of a worldwide disaster that something happened. And that, you know, census records, everything dropped, people, the numbers dropped. 1824, the British government instructed the Governor of New South Wales, Thomas Brisbane, to occupy Norfolk Island as a place to send the worst description of convicts. Its remoteness, previously seen as a disadvantage, was now viewed as an asset for the detention of recurrent male prisoners. The convicts detained have long been assumed to be hard-core receivers or undoubtedly convicted capital respites, that is, men transported to Australia who committed fresh colony crimes for which they were sentenced to death but were spared the gallows on the condition of life at Norfolk Island. However, a 2011 study used, using the database of 6,458 Norfolk Island convicts has demonstrated that the reality was somewhat different. More than half detained at Norfolk Island were without ever receiving a colonial conviction and only 15% have been required from the death sentence. Furthermore, an overwhelming majority of the convicts sent to Norfolk Island have committed non-violent property offences and the average length of detention there was three years. The British government began to wind down the second penal settlement after 1847, and the last convicts were removed to Tasmania in May 1855. The island was abandoned because the transportation to the United Kingdom to Van Diemen's Land, Tasmania, had ceased in 1853 to be replaced by a penal servitude in the UK. Around this time, they were using... Um, Norfolk as a place to grow food for Port Arthur as well, which is in Tasmania. Big false flag happened there in um, Port Arthur, a lot of people know it. Next settlement began in June, 8th of June, 1856, as the descendants of the Tahitians. I wonder if they're Tartarians or related to Tartarians or somewhat come from there. HMS Bounty Mutineers including those of Fletcher Christian, were resettled from Pitcairn Island, which had become too small for the growing population. On the 3rd of May, 1856, 193 people had left Pitcairn Islands aboard Morrishire, Shire, and on the 8th of June, 194 people arrived and a baby had been born and transferred. The Pitcairners occupied many of the buildings remaining from the penal settlements and gradually established traditional farming and whaling industries on the island. Although some families decided to return to Pitcairn in 1858 and 1863, the island's population continued to grow. They accepted additional settlers who arrived with the whaling fleets. 1867, the headquarters of the Malaysian Mission, the Church of England, was established on the island, and in 1920 the mission was relocated from Norfolk Island to the Solomon Islands to be closer to the focus of the population. Norfolk Island was the subject of several experiments in administration during the century. It began in the 19th century as part of the 
Colony in New South Wales. On the 29th of September 1844, Norfolk Island was transferred to the, from the Colony of New South Wales to the Colony of Van Diemen's Land. And then on the 1st of November 1856, Norfolk Island was separated from the Colony of Tasmania, formerly Van Diemen's Land, and constituted as a distinct and separate settlement. The affairs which should be until further in order that on behalf of Her Majesty be administered by a governor to be for that purpose appointed. The governor of New South Wales was constituted as the governor of Norfolk Island under the colony of New South Wales. Yet, the island was not made part of New South Wales and remained separate. The colony of New South Wales ceased to exist upon the establishment of the Commonwealth of Australia on the 1st of January 1901. From that date, the responsibility of the administration of Norfolk vested in the governor of the state of New South Wales. Okay, so it's going on about proclamations. Um, during World War Two, the um, island became a key airbase for refuelling depot between Australia and New Zealand. Solomon Islands, the airstrip was constructed by Australia, New Zealand and United States servicemen during 1942. Since Norfolk Island fell within New Ze Zealand's area of responsibility, it was garrisoned by a New Zealand army known as the Air Force. At a large army camp that had the capacity to house 1,500 strong force. The Air Force relieved a company of the 2nd Australian Imperial Force Island, proved too remote to come under the track during the war, and Air Force left the island in February 1944. In 1979, Norfolk Island was granted limited self-governance by Australia, under which the island elected a government that ran on most of the island's affairs. Now, back at that time, you had to have a passport. Everything was duty-free, and... Um, yeah, now the government's taking it back over. You don't need a passport to go there. Um, everyone's starting to pay taxes over there. Okay, so it's going on about the Ngoni Territory. Um, the island's highest point is Mount Bates, reaching 390 metres, 1,047 feet above sea level, located in the northwest quadrant of the island. The majority of the train is suitable for farming or other agricultural uses, and Phillip Island is the second largest in the territory. Very rocky, close part, coastline. Climate subtropical, little seasonal difference. Um, the island is eroded remnant of a salt volcano after around two to three million years ago, and the island now consists in mainly rolling plains. It forms the highest pope point on the Norfolk Ridge, part of the submerged continent of Zealandia. Now this is a massive continent that's underwater. I'll go down here, it goes all the way up to almost Papua New Guinea, it goes up to New Zealand, it's sort of in the middle, bottom bit of it. And it's still rising. A bit like the Himalayas, it'll continue to rise. Um, okay. So I'll put all this up in the, the links up in the um, description and um, I'll just show you some buildings. Some people that believe in the mud flood probably believe that these buildings are older and that they've just come along and moved into it. It certainly looks like that. These buildings are very old. I don't think the con convicts built them. And if you're here with me at this long, I just want to say thank you. And also I want to say thank you to um, everyone that um, watched the other video with the star foot. I muchly appreciate it. So, here we go. We've got a few little photos I just wanted to bring up of Norfolk. This is the old penal settlement. And of course, as they've come along, they've put their newer date up in the top to make it look like they built it. This one here is the Church of England. I just wanted to show you, anyone that believes in the mud flood will notice that it's up to the second level. And around the back, it sort of comes up to almost the window around the back. So why did they do it like that? Um, it's very strange. Very strange. This is another really old. <clears throat> now you look at the back of this, and it's all risen up there. And if you build a building like that, you dig it out and build a retaining wall, or any sound engineer would. 
build a retained wall. My next video is going to be about churches and city of churches. Um, all the so-called church buildings that were around. Um, so stay tuned. I'm currently working on that one. I'll upload it later on today or tomorrow. This is another church. Once again, why is it up to the second floor like that? Look around here. It looks like it's been dug out there. And the Australian Aboriginals have been in Australia for 55,000 years and they've got stories of tsunamis 300 foot tall wiping out the east coast of Australia. And that's another story I'm currently working on. It's Tasmania. Um, a lot of these islands are very similar. It's Norfolk again. So, uh, yeah, once again, I'll leave all the links in the description. Most of these guys that founded the island were also Freemasons. As we know, most of them are part of the old penal colony. It had a jail that, that all of it was destroyed when they left in 1805 and then it was fully abandoned 1811, 1812 at the end there. For some reason all the photos have been destroyed. Now you look at this photo, <coughs> it's had, had some damage to it. <coughs> it just, just looks really, really strange, you know. So. I'm still studying the census records, the islands, trying to piece all this together. Look at the quality of workmanship there. It's just unreal. So I'll leave the links in the description for you. They're very easy to find all this stuff. This is the old prison, and in the middle, it's, it sort of had a round circle in the middle. And the only thing that's standing is that wall on the outside, and I showed you that brick where they added their date on top of the arch just there. So you look at this building, it's got stuff on the roof. Is it mud? What is that? Mud? What's on the back of this wall here? Mud? Along there? Mud? Very muddy ground, like here, mud. All along here, mud. Very uneven surface. So if you're still here with me I want to say thank you and um, if you've got any suggestions let me know and uh, I'll try and get back to it and do it. So here we go in off that goal again see and what date was this one it's very old I look at it Kings the old goal Kingston Norfolk Kerry Sydney you can see the roundness in it you want to let me zoom in nope. all the buildings are still standing there that road looks really oh wow we got a road there obviously it's all been washed out mud over there that's been hit with mud that's lost. So I, I think a tsunami's come through here and pretty much wiped most of it out. You look at the pines up the back. Look at the pines here. They're very thin. Very thin. And there's no little trees. They all look like they're gone. Because the area was covered in forest when they, they got there. And look how there's nothing there now. So... This one. Okay, so that was that one. I just want to show you some of these other ones quickly. And um, that'll be it for me today. I'll get this uploaded and I'll finish the other one I'm currently working on about the city of churches. Some beautiful buildings. Um, I found out this place has railway tunnels, all sorts of stuff under the city that people don't even know about to this day. So... Cemetery. My mother went there here to Norfolk Island not long ago and we've got some beautiful photos. Look at this one. This is just beautiful. Unreal.
can see our military base. That's been dug out, you can see. Right from there. Bit of soil there. Okay, well, thank you guys. If you're still here at this time, appreciate it. Hit the like button, and if you subscribe, I really appreciate it. Thanks, bye.